हेलो एंड वेलकम टू येट अनादर पार्ट ऑफ ई कॉमर्स स्पेशलिस्ट कोर्स एंड टुडे आई विल बी कवरिंग मोर अबाउट द डोमेन एक्सपर्टीज सो इन केस यू आर अ सर्विस प्रोवाइडर एंड ऑफरिंग सर्विसेज ऑन डिजिटल मार्केटिंग और ऑफरिंग सर्विसेज टू योर सेलर्स ऑन अ मैनुअल प्रोसेस और इवन ऑटोमेशन डू यू चार्ज प्रीमियम डू यू हैव अ रिटेनर क्लाइंट अ रिटेनर क्लाइंट दैट्स अ लॉन्ग टर्म एसोसिएशन इफ नॉट this video is going to be very beneficial for you if you pitch a client with incomplete knowledge or partial knowledge then the client can sense that you know this person has a little bit knowledge on digital marketing or has little bit knowledge on automations but does not have a overall knowledge so a 360 degree knowledge is required if you are willing to pitch your client for long term association that too on a retainer basis hope this video is helpful for anybody who wishes to retain long term association with their clients and if you like the video please hit the like button if you find this content beneficial do share in your comments and i can come up with more of such videos and if you think that you want to share this content with others so that it's helpful for them so in case you are a service provider or a digital marketer you would say why would i need an extensive domain knowledge i can just offer them marketing services and uh, pitch to a client well yes you can do that and so many digital marketing companies are doing that but if you want to offer a 360 degree solution to your clients then that knowledge is not sufficient so in case you want to retain a long term association with your clients your, your domain knowledge has to be perfect so when i say perfect means any question that comes up to you while you're making the pitch or even while you're delivering has to be accurate you don't know what the client might ask you or what is the expansion they are looking for but if you can offer the services that has a complete 360 degree coverage whether it's a manual process whether it's automation whether it's digital marketing whether it's uh, running ads for them or whether it's managing their day to day operations so if you have a complete knowledge it will help you in each and every aspect of the service that you provide now let me give you a little bit background when i say about domain knowledge i started my journey 20 years back with an e-commerce course where i learned about web designing development networking and programming languages like basic c c++ java and dotnet while all of this has been helpful to me till date the most important factor that i learned was that you have to keep improvising you have to keep learning new things as they come up because i don't know how many of you are aware but the recent chat gtp has taken over or might take over so many jobs in the coming future because it is an automation tool based on ai which will do most of the manual work that people are offering as services in the current scenario so this learning this journey 20 years back taught me that there are so many institutes that offer that same course but there are certain institutes that always have an edge like at that time niit which still exists was offering a simple e-commerce course and other computer skills courses that still exist in their uh, you know category of courses and they are probably the most largest uh, institutes that are offering courses because their aspect was not only to offer courses they were also offering placement to the students who complete a 6 month or a 1 year or a 2 year course with them and if you go to their website see the kind of expansion they have right now because we talk more about the edtech companies we forget that the institutes or the companies that started their journey right from the beginning or maybe right at the start of the inception of the technology they are way bigger today and they hardly spend money on marketing because their expansion is so huge across the globe that uh, you know students come to them just by the name on its own and their placement whether be it online or offline has been very 
exponential now there were institutes other than nit at that time like aptec and so many others these names are already gone from the market because they do not exist anymore they had a you know phase of 5 years running the company or the institute very well but now they are nowhere so do you want to be a player who wants to go forward in the long run or you want to be a player for a short term purpose choice is yours so imagine a life without any technology can you in today's fast paced technological world imagine even a single day without using technology be it your phone be it your uh, you know day to day management of paying bills or shopping you can't imagine even a single day without technology in today's time but if there were no people no one who started institutes or courses way back would it be possible that we had so much of technology so many people say that you know just uh, do uh, just achieve good marks go to a good uh, college get a good degree and then go for a regular job but these institutes did not follow that normal traditional education pattern these institutes uh, offered short term courses which gave more knowledge to students at that time that uh, you know focused on technology and help in the growth of technology that we see today now most of the service providers the sellers or people who are selling their products online that this uh, technology came as a huge opportunity for them so imagine so many job offers that come up through these technologies would have not existed if nobody had taken that action to uh, you know start those institutes or start those courses way back 20 years ago my e-commerce has a long term vision maybe a vision to 2030 as we are in 2023 right now again it gives you an edge if you start today if you haven't started yet join more courses learn more upgrade your skills it's not going to uh, you know work for short term that you just quick youtube video and learn certain things and then deliver it as a service you have to go through a concrete process which gives you an overall knowledge that knowledge that you offer as services so in case you are a service provider having a vision a long term vision can only help you if you want to sustain in the market if you have a short term vision and then you want to you know pivot to a different business category or a different service uh, provider business category then definitely it's fine that you for a short term learn something and deliver it but if you have a vision for long term you have to be very particular about the knowledge that you have and the constant improvisation of your knowledge has to happen now let me get back to the domain knowledge which is the main part of today's video there are so many e-commerce models and if you are a service provider i'm sure you might be knowing about it if you are not uh, not well aware about it let me walk you through a little bit about what is b2c so a business setup that is offering Uh, products it could be digital products or it could be physical products but the businesses that are offering uh digital or physical products to their end consumer now what is an end consumer end consumer is someone who is using those products for themselves so if a business is providing any kind of product to an end consumer that is a b2c business model and there is also d2c so when you say d2c it is direct to the consumer so any business any product that is being offered to a end user or a end consumer that is a d2c so b2c and d2c are almost same but we often call as b2c or d2c it could be online the products that you are offering online so many manufacturing companies have come up online and they are selling those products directly to the consumer or if there are digital products there are also end consumers or probably other businesses so that when comes the b2b model one business offering any product to other business now this product can be a digital product or a um, physical product that can be online which is 
on a b2b model so the business that is a either a manufacturer or a wholesaler and is selling online either the physical or the digital product and the end consumer is again a business so they are not consuming those products for themselves but they are buying these products to further sell it to the end consumer that kind of a business model is a b2b model another model that's very prevalent at least in india is the b2g model where a particular business is only aiming to sell the government because we still have a huge amount of public company in case you are based in india and you have certain level of political connections the business model of uh, b2g can be very helpful for you but the products that you offer to the government should be at a level where only government can promote such products so for example uh, recently i just saw uh, the episode of shark tank where someone was selling a fire extinguisher very very unique concept of a fire extinguisher but that product can't be sold to an end consumer but can be sold to a government because uh, the government can promote such products if they find the product really beneficial then the last model is a c2c model where uh, end consumer who has bought products from a business and is again selling those products to another end consumer so for example uh, you know when many women run businesses from their home buying tupperware oriflame or such kind of products and selling it to the other consumers that kind of a model is a, a customer to customer model or a c2c model or even the retailers in the market they are also kind of c2c model but not a complete c2c model now in case so before we proceed with the further content on domain expertise let's talk a little bit about g20 and now you would say that you know why shifting from uh, the main content and why we will talk about g20 on its own so my aim or my vision is to take this agency or maybe your company globally and that is why keeping an eye on the global economy the strategies or the global forums is very important and g20 if you are aware it's good but if you're not aware let me tell you g20 is a group of 20 most powerful countries in the world and this year india is india has the presidency of g20 which makes it more powerful now most of the people say that it comes on rotation to every country and this is nothing so great about there is nothing so great about it and everybody is eyeing to see what we do or how we utilize this power that we have this year so most of the people have access to resources and have access to power but what we make use of that power or what we make use of that resources that gives you an edge and let's see how india takes that edge of this presidency now these 20 countries are the ones who contribute to the major international trade the major population of the world and that's why they come together or sit together to discuss major crises or major uh, strategies in financial in area if you are a service provider who is planning to sell their services or approach clients globally then you need to understand the demographics because until and unless you do not understand your demographics or how e-commerce works in each of the different demographics then pitching a client won't make sense because you don't have an idea of what might sell in us or how to approach a client that's placed in us it might vary it might vary that what you pitch or what you offer to a client that's based in us might vary to a client that's based in europe because they have uh, you know different approach of running a business they have a different approach of adapting things they have a different setup of uh, distribution channels which i'll cover uh, later in the video but you need to understand the understanding your client based on their demographics is very important before you pitch them
So let's cover a little bit about supply chain management, which I will give you a very brief idea, but I cover a detailed idea based on each and every demographics that I have worked on, what supply chain management might vary, how it works in India and how it works in US. Because I've worked with sellers that you know, sell products in uh, 10 to 15 marketplaces. I've also worked with sellers who are only in US or sellers who are only based in India. So how the supply chain management works, if you don't have an idea, let me quickly walk you through. Uh, any manufacturer who plans to set up a plant, a manufacturing plant and wants to uh, you know, uh, manufacture products, he needs some kind of raw material. And where do where does he get those raw materials from? That is a very important pass aspect of the business. Now, anyways, any manufacturer might already know that. But if you're working with a seller who, uh, sorry, a manufacturer who is, uh, you know, looking to expand his business and you as a service provider come in and you're able to give him those insights that is beneficial for their business expansions, then you alone providing not just the digital marketing services or not just the manual services, you can cover other aspects of the business as well. So where that raw material comes in and then the next chain is who is the supplier, how that supply goes to the factory or you know the main site where the product will be manufactured. After the product has been manufactured, how will it be packaged? What will be the distribution network? In which city, which area that specific product can be uh, you know sold to so how to build that distribution channel how that distribution channel will end up to a retail and then finally to a end consumer so this whole chain you need to understand if you are offering an e-commerce services to your client now the supply chain management has another aspect which is a global supply chain anybody who is sitting in India uh, as we all know might be an exporter and is selling products to other countries it could be uh, countries like Bangladesh Nepal or it could even be US so when uh, you are providing services to such uh, clients then you must know how the global supply chain works what is the transportation cost what is the shipping cost how what are the service provider that are offering shipping that is most effective in the countries that is only placed in asia what is the most effective shipping uh, you know method to ship their products to a country that is far away like us so you need to know all of this and how you can automate that process for them if you're looking to provide an automation service Apart from the supply chain management, there is a distribution network. This alone part is so important to your business that as a service provider, if you don't know how the flow of distribution works, you must know it because when you're offering services, if you don't know how, uh, you know, uh, offline works, then bringing only online because in India, uh, the online services only work in tier 1, tier 2, 3 cities. What about the tier 3, tier 4, tier 5? Still a distribution network uh, works in these cities. But if you are aware and you can help your service provider with these distribution channels also, that gives you an edge over the other service providers. Now, there are three levels, which is only a brief about the distribution channel and I cover it extensively in my course. But let me give you a quick brief. The level one is someone is producing a product, is approaching the retailer directly and the retailer is selling it to the end consumer. This is the smallest distribution channel. But if you look at the larger manufacturers, they approach wholesalers the wholesaler approaches the retailers and the retailer in end contacts the uh, end consumer. The level three could be, again, there could be a middleman, there could be an agent, or there could be a, you know, a B2B format model where they are distributing several 
products of different companies to various wholesalers and this is a very large or uh, you know a very complicated kind of a model but in india this is the most effective and uh, you know distribution channel that works till date in targeting the end customer that is placed in tier 3 tier 4 cities now once you are aware of what is supply chain management you know about the distribution when you're starting out with the seller and say for the seller says or the you know the client says that i want to launch a new product but i don't have an idea of which product to launch so as a service provider are you capable enough or you're well enough uh, well aware of how to research what product works in which demographics so this uh, on the screen you see the global fish market share on a specific region do you see in europe the fish market uh, share is higher but it's not so big in the other areas so when you are offering that service and you know how to research a particular product like for example i worked with a pet product seller in us any pet products the number of products that are sold in a us market or a european market the same volume you can't achieve in india because uh, if you talk about india the pets are only dogs or cats or maybe birds but you can't imagine the number of pets in us people have they have a pet as a tortoise a lizard can you ever imagine having a lizard as a pet but there are so many pets in the uh, us market and that's why offering products that is for a pet seller is huge market and there is a huge scope so if you can't research well enough what product works in which demographics then your 360 degree vision of offering services cannot be complete so you need to be thorough on what you are offering and if you can offer a research that itself is a very comprehensive service to provide so now that you are aware of what is supply chain management what is the distribution networking based on various demographics you are well aware how to research the best product for your clients you also need to figure out what is the niche not only for yourself or not only for your own business where you're providing services even for the clients that you're working with now you will say that why do i need a niche for my seller or my client well if your client says that you know i want to sell a product which i am still not aware what product to sell how would you help them you have to niche then niche it down and most of these business owners or these clients want to focus on business expansions they want to focus on putting in money but they want someone who can help them figure out what is the best product for the market what is the niche market where they can sell that specific product so this is one tool i'm giving you an example there are other tools as such and how to use these tools niche scraper helps you figure out which product and which demographics helps you achieve that uh, you know confidence that you can pitch to a client wherein you can say that you know i have the uh, required tools to help you with the research which will be automated and which will be uh, you know faster and you can deliver those services as part of either the 360 degree part or you can offer only the research part on a regular basis because uh, a seller who is growing and want to wants to invest more money they constantly fig, uh, try to figure out what product in which market to sell and you can use such tools now when you do research uh, the research is sometimes manual and sometimes automated so what i mean by that is there is a hybrid research that you need to do you have to approach manually to people to figure out what is the exact requirement you need to uh, use certain automated tools and when you blend both of this together that hybrid research gives you an edge over your competitors because now you will uh, give a very accurate research to your clients when you are offering services 
so for example uh, a car seller who knows that in 2015 this is the kind of volume uh, will he decide that in 2015 no because there's a huge and massive production that's required when you want to sell cars so he has to do that research at least 10 years before even starting the production similarly when uh, a visionary has the vision of selling more of such cars like ev that is coming up and uh, you know more of uh, more of manufacturers are coming up how to uh, manufacture more of ev uh, whether it's a two wheeler or it's a car the vision to sell those cars in 2025 the research or the analysis or the strategy has to be built today you can't do that research when you start selling so uh, more and more people who can do that data analysis can do that research in a hybrid format will be the ones who can offer that services in the future now along with that uh, if you don't want to go for a service provider there are so many jobs that uh, come up if you don't have the required knowledge because as the e-commerce industry will grow the need for a product manager a manager who has a complete knowledge about the product can pitch to the client can interact with the end user can interact with the business these jobs in the market or the requirement for such jobs will grow over the years and if you don't uh, have a knowledge on what's a product manager i will give some uh, you know reference uh, links where people who are working as a senior product manager in the industry and they give their aspect or vision on what is required to be or you know what uh, actually is required to become a product manager you can refer to those links but right now i am just covering a very brief idea that if you want to go for a regular job that's based on product manager then you need to have a complete knowledge about your domain but because if you don't have the complete knowledge how will you talk to your stakeholders so if you don't have an overall knowledge of what you are trying to do about uh, you know only in the e-commerce area then uh, if you don't have the complete knowledge of uh, the domain aspect of the e-commerce industry then probably taking up a job on a product manager won't be beneficial for you because uh, if you don't have the domain knowledge uh, you won't be more effective you can end up only to be a product uh, sorry you can end up only to be a project manager or a technical manager but there are already so many project managers or so many technical managers but in the current scenario the demand for product managers is increasing whether they are working remotely so i have so many examples of company those are hiring product managers that are working 100% remote and there are regular jobs also that are offering product managers so as the e-commerce industry grows the requirement for product managers will grow and if you start today start gaining that knowledge today it will be beneficial for you after you have acquired all of this knowledge you can pitch to the clients that are your retainer clients and are long term association whether you are offering them a monthly fixed price whether you are offering them a weekly per hour pricing whether you are offering them a fixed weekly price doesn't matter what matters at the end is you retain them and that too for a long term once you do that your marketing cost comes down considerably and in the long run you will be cash flow positive because any business any service provider if you are not cash flow positive your business is not going to sustain i hope this video was beneficial do let me know in the comment section if you want to know more about uh, the domain you can join my course reach out to me on my email or the whatsapp number visit the website and um you know as they say this is just the start i'm going to come up with more of such videos next i will cover 
very specific GTIN exemptions that is required for an Amazon seller and anything and everything around that product. What is a UPC code? How uh, you, uh, you know, for which, which products you need to have an SN, how that works, anything and everything about that will be in my next video. If you want uh, or have an idea of what to cover in the videos, do let me know in the comment section and I will see you there in the next video. Thank you so much.